In the past few days, I've been working a lot with my CMK configuration on my Glove 80 keyboard. And I do it like a real chat in the terminal by editing a key map configuration file. So if you like spending most of the day in the terminal and you're a new Vim user, this video is 100% for you. If you like to edit your CMK firmware in a GUI on the browser, and if you like using training wheels when you go on your bicycle, this video is not for you. So let me show you how this magic works. Here is my key map configuration file. My keyboard is a glove 80. I'm gonna go up a little bit here so we can see the main layer. Okay, so this is the left half of the keyboard. Let me show you my keyboard camera real quick. So what we were looking at the screen a little moment ago is this where my left hand is. I'm going to move to the right on the terminal right now, and you will be able to see the right hand side of it as well. This doesn't match at the moment on the base layer because I don't use the top row. This one here, I don't use this at all. I also don't use this row here, but doesn't matter. I also don't use these keys here for the thumbs. The only ones that I use are the ones that have some sort of um, label on them. The rest of them are unused, but that's besides the point of this video. This is not what this video is about. So let me switch back to my terminal. Okay, so I'm on the left hand side here. Let me switch to the right hand side. You can see the base layer. Notice that the um, thumbs are here and this is just a line of comments. And on the right hand side, we can see the other half, right? So this would be the right half, including the six thumbs, which are the ones here, right? So would be here, one, two, three, four, five, six for the right hand side and these other ones for the left hand side. I should have left the space here in the middle to separate these two, but that is possible. That is no problem at all. I'm gonna show you how that is done in a second. And maybe we're going to add the space here. Hopefully I will not forget. So like I was saying, if I move to the left, there's a comment, okay? And um, I have been working with this file in the past few days and it's a pain in the to play around with this, okay? Because when you make a change, all of this thing shifts and you have to manually adjust each one of them and it's painful. So let me show you what happens with this plugin, okay? So let's say that I copy this, you know, just for the sake of example, right? And um, I'm just going to paste it somewhere where we don't have a lot of activity so that it shifts all the stuff to the right, like here, for example, right? Let's say that I copy that before. So I'm going to paste it here and notice what's gonna happen. It auto formatted everything, right? The columns on the right, I didn't have to touch anything. It did it automatically for me, okay? So that is awesome. And it also updates automatically the comment that is up here. So I know that this is the key right above H, right? And in my case, that is the letter Y. So I'm just going to undo these changes and we're back to normal. Nothing happened. Let's move to other layers so you can see this more in action. I'm just gonna go down here with Control D. This is just a layer in the Glove 80. I don't use this, the magic layer. I didn't configure this or this. This already came. This is one that I configured. This is my navigation layer. And uh, this is my symbol layer as well. And I have other ones here. This is mine, my sub layers, my applications layer, my sessions layer, system layer. So as you can see, this grid is automatically added when you create a new layer and it automatically formats the file for you. That's the main thing. Let's try to separate the two halves in the Glove 80. And I'm also going to show you how this is done. So I'm gonna switch here to my dot files real quick. And I already have this file open, which is qmk.nvim. And if you have worked with 
ZMK or QMK configuration files and you do it manually without auto formatting, it is doable, but it's way too extreme and complicated. This is going to make your life a thousand times easier. So I highly recommend this. Let's see if we can leave a space, right? So here's the layout for the Glove 80. It matches exactly all the keys that my Glove 80 has, right? So if I bring the camera back up, you will see that the amount of keys here is the X's and the other ones, these dashes are just a space. So I'm just going to add a line in between there to add an additional space, paste that there. And I'm also going to insert it here and insert this here as well. So there we go. Our layout should match. And if we switch back to the other repo, let me just quit out of this file and I'm just going to open it again. Let's see what happens. And it should auto format it for us. Let's see. There it is. Now I'm between the two halves in here because of the additional space that I added. Let's go back or let's go to the bottom. Maybe we, we can see it a little bit better there. Here, you can see it better here or in an empty layer like here, for example, looks better. Right, so I have both halves of the keyboard here. So let me go back to my dot files here and let me switch to my keyboard camera. Pay attention to the image on the screen right now and it matches exactly this. So I have five keys on the top, six here, six, 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 and I have this five, okay? But the thumb cluster is here, here, and here. Maybe I should leave a space between these keys and the thumb cluster. That is easy in the key map. Let me switch to that file. So what I'm saying is add an additional empty column here to separate these keys on the left from the thumbs, which are here. But I don't mind. This is the exact way that I understand the layout. This is more than enough for me. So what do you have to do to get this? First, just go to the repo, which is the one shown here. Give it a star. If you have done this, you won't appreciate this plugin. Whoever did this, Code Thread, I really appreciate this, man. Awesome plugin, to be honest. Extremely useful. Best plugin of the year so far. No, just kidding. But it's on the top. It's a pretty good plugin. Okuva. I know this guy. This is the guy that maintains the autosave plugin, which I also use. So based and based. Good people here. So after you give it a star, just read the documentation. But if you're lazy and you don't want to read and you use the lazy plugin manager, just copy paste this, configure your layout, the physical layout according to your keyboard. But remember that it has to match what you have in here. Okay. You will probably understand it better on this row that I have here. Notice that it has to match this, what you have here, these characters. What is live trying to say me with all these subliminal messages? Like, did I switch to Nix? Did I switch to Linux? Is that the answer? Is that what this is trying to tell me? You let me know in the comments. Okay, but make sure that this matches what you have exactly in here. If we go back to documentation, you won't see as well that you need to add tree seeder. So, for CMK, you need to add this device tree seeder parser on NVIM tree seeder. So let me go back here to my terminal. I'm going to open tree seeder.lua and I just added it here. And that's basically it. It will automatically format and comment your file and give you a nice syntax highlighting as well. What it would be nice, I don't know if it's possible or not, is to show you like a diagnostic something when you have a key repeated in the file. Maybe that's asking too much, but I was just thinking out loud. And let me explain why this would be helpful, at least for me, because I don't know if I already use this key, right? So I have to select it and I have to, you know, search for it. And no, I just see one out of one on the bottom right corner. Same thing with this one. I have to come here select it, hold on, god damn it, E, okay, and here, select it, and I just see one out of one. 
I have in multiple occasions repeated a key that I should not repeat, but it's not a must. If you are organized, you will realize after flashing the firmware that you're using a repeated key, just a matter of, you know, being organized, but would be a nice to have. So remember when star the repo, awesome job, extremely love this. And just so that you're aware, I'm executing scripts and I'm doing a lot of stuff directly from CMK on Mac OS. I'm migrating away from Canada. Well, I'm still using Canada on my MacBook keyboard, but I'm doing everything in CMK, execute scripts, switch between my Kitty sessions. Basically, all of the things that I did in Canada, which were a lot, I am now able to do in CMK. And why is this important? Because sometimes I have to use a different computer. At work, I use a Windows computer and not having my key maps, my symbols and everything there, all my sub layers is painful because I have to use a different keyboard. No, so now I can use this keyboard on this computer and on my work computer, but also my MacBook built-in keyboard has the exact same layout because I'm using Canada there. I'll explain all of this in a future video. I'll release that, I don't know when, maybe tomorrow, Sunday, next week, and um, talk about it all there, how it's done and all that stuff. All right, so I think I covered everything. I didn't plan any of this. This was just a quick video. If you have any questions, thoughts, let me know in the comments. And before I let you go, I also forgot to thank the CEO, Web23, web23.com. That's my boy, my friend, Ruman. Really appreciate that, man. And also the executive producers and everyone else that is a YouTube member. If you want to support me, you can go ahead and do it. If you don't want to donate because you love open source and a dollar is going to leave you poor, you can like the video, you can subscribe, and you can share it as well. That's it. Till next time.